All right, this material is a tap and go. It's the North Carolina hickory. This material requires a rubber mallet for installation. One thing you need to definitely know about a uh, tap and go installation, you need to definitely make sure your end joints are clear of any debris. On the tap and go installation, always make sure your joints and your up unders are clear of any type of debris. Any small piece can make the lock mechanism and so hard you won't be able to get to go together. You're talking a piece of sugar, like a grain of sugar or no. something like a, gr a grid, a piece of dirt? A piece of dirt or something like that or some of the pieces of the lock mechanism. Every plank. Oh yeah. And then on our end joints here. Of course make sure your first row is always even. Put, uh, put your fist right here to push down. Okay. On the locking mechanism. So you're putting some force on the locking yeah, mechanism. Yeah, I'm putting force itself. on the locking mechanism right here. Right. So that way, this little lip right here, yes, perfect. sticking out right here, gets in under the locking the in under the plank of this side. Okay. As soon as that gets down, the seam's still not together. That's what they call the tap and go. With your mallet, you need to do it at an angle. You're actually standing on the plank. I'm standing on this plank so it doesn't move. I am going to lock this mechanism in at an angle. There you go. That's locked in now. So you're using the mallet across the top. Yes, I, at an angle. I'm locking that mechanism in. And that rubber stuff? This is just rubber mallet coming all apart. And the gap I see is a bevel. Yes, beveled edge. Yeah, always a little bevel right there in between the two planks. So it's definitely together even though I see that little gap. Yeah, yeah, that's a beveled edge. You just need to look at the seam. It's a, it's a clear seam all the way together. There is no gap that I can see in between the planks. And also, if you want guys to notice... You've got the tongues... Facing out right now. So... so you're in the wrong direction. I'm in the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this around. Okay. Because I need the tongues against the wall. So you lock it in, put some force on it, and then yep. you're going to stand up on the receiving plank. There you go, that's together. And you've pushed that out from the wall. Yeah, I pushed it out of the wall because now that I got the first plank done, I'm gonna get on the laminate. Okay. Always always get on the laminate for your install. Hit this. Do you hear that lock? Ooh. That's my thumbs. I'm pushing down right here on this seam. You're pushing down with my, with my with my thumbs. I'm literally pushing down on the laminate. Okay. To get that lip up under into that lock. Okay, similar to what you did on the end. Yeah, similar to what I did on the end joints. I was pushing down right there to get that in. What I do, get up again. Stand on the receiving plank. Stand on the receiving plank. Almost, almost there. Sometimes I can go and get a little stubborn. Yeah, it's, I can see a little bit of a black line right there. Okay. So, you just gotta get a little bit more force. You still prefer to hammer on the top of the plank and not, not on that outside end. Oh, you're talking about like this right here, tapping block? Exactly. Yeah, the reason I'm not doing the tapping block is because it won't actually lock in because it needs to get down into the locking. You really need that downward motion. Yeah, you really gotta have that downward motion to get that locked in there. So a tapping block functionally would work to move the plank in, in one direction, mm -hmm. but it's not going to do the direction you need. Exactly. That's together. Your boards are all perfectly flat to the ground, and normally when you have a laminate floor, except for drop and lock, you've got a little bit of a cup up angle. Yeah, yeah, this right here you won't. You won't, okay. Yeah, Is that going to be all right? That's fine. Pushing down on there, come down. All right, this is in down here. Now I'm going to do it at an angle this way too. So you don't raise it up and connect it at some angle to get that end joint in. Once you've done the angle, you're literally using the hammer to slide them together basically. Exactly. I wonder if I'm uneven. Yeah, I'm a little uneven. What went uneven for you? Oh, the first row is uneven a little bit. I was having an issue with this locking right here because my first row got uneven. 
I see. So the getting, keeping even and staying even is important. Yes. Oh, yeah. So like, getting started is the hardest part. Okay. So, so when you're getting started, you're going to want to check and double check and triple check that yes. you're even. Yeah, you're even. See, I'm off on this right here. If you try to take the flooring apart, it will come apart right here. And what, what did we lose there? I lost the end joint piece right there. Really? Because I tried to take it apart and I forced it apart and I shouldn't have. Now, to my knowledge, if you try to take this uh, up or if you're going to try to take it apart, mm -hmm. if you try to lift up on this plank right here, if, yeah, if you try to lift up on this plank right here, right. you'll blow out the, the bottom portion of the locking. Really? Yeah. Just grinds it right off. Say it'll. Okay. So in other words, don't lift up the plank like I just did to get the flooring to come apart. Okay. All right. So let's say you do have to take it apart. But so you have to take it apart. If you have to go to the road right here, you want to push down on the plank. Okay. okay. Push off like that. That's how you got to do it. Because I'm pretty much separating it this way. Okay. I'm trying to take it apart like this way. And what you've done Not is you've angling it. You've left your end joint intact. Yep. On both. In both, right? On both. Yeah. This is perfectly fine too. So when you do that, then that piece is good as, as like the end of row or start of a row piece. Oh, you can still use it? Yeah, oh yeah, it can still be used. You just have to wait till you get to a certain point in installation where you use it at the end of the row. You cut that part off. And then just slice off that part to the end of the row. Good. So if you do break it, you yep. have lost a plank. Yep, you have lost it. It's very easy to jostle your planks part. Oh, really? So it's, you need to come apart again? Yep. Like I said, getting started is the hardest part. So basically, when you've got, when you're going over a seam, over an end joint seam, before you install your next plank, check it. Yes. Check it. And now you're going to straddle both of those planks. Yes. Keep that together. You're doing the vertical part, the horizontal part. Oh, yeah. And, and, trying to, and making sure I'm in. There's that pop. There you go. That plank is in. So your engine seam was mostly together. You finished it up with the hammer. Yes, with the mallet, yeah. Oh, getting pieces out of the way. Don't make sure anything's exactly. in the way. Now I'll use this plank down here at the end of the row. Okay, that's the one we broke the other yep. end off of. Okay, we'll put this plank up here. And I'm, I'm going to push down with my fingers right here. You'll hear it lock in. Right. Make sure to push down. If you have to push all the way down along the board, you can. Now, style question, your seam on this third one is almost in the same place as your seam on the first one. That's you okay. you care about that? That's okay. Yeah. You just can't have the previous row eight inches or more. And that's a structural thing. Yeah, structural thing, yeah. Okay. What are you saying? Always push, push down. You actually, you actually, when you push down, you actually hear it locking up under. You actually hear it lock up under because I'm pushing down with my thumbs right here. You sure do. Almost together, but not quite. Almost. There you go. Now you're dogged and relentless about making sure those are absolutely together. Yes, I'm making sure they're actually all the way together. Um, you want to try to get rid of the black line? Okay. Which, on these? I mean, it's barely there on that one. There you go. It's pretty practically gone on that one now. There you go. That's your tap and go installation. So you're playing whack-a-mole with gaps. Almost, yeah, playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> that type of installation right there. I mean, it can get pretty uh, tiring, but mm -hmm. once you get the knack down of doing it, mm -hmm. shouldn't have a bit of a problem installing. If you have any questions on a tap and go installation, feel free to give us a call.